Welcome to the Fit, Healthy, and Happy podcast. Today, we have an amazing guest who is one of the OGs of YouTube. He has multiple businesses, including Sour Strips, Ever Forward. He's an amazing podcaster, a sponsored athlete, and he's also a deadlift king and so much more. So welcome to the podcast, Max Tuning. What an intro. What's up, guys? Happy to be here. It's uh, very rare. Usually I take the crown for I'm the best deadlift. I've only pulled 620. So, and I'm a lot heavier. So I think this is some extra motivation for me. <laughs> well, I think the, uh, this is, you're getting an exclusive pod while I'm recovering from this hernia surgery. So I, uh, I don't think heavy deadlifts are in my future at all. They were already kind of on the back burner for me. And now that I've had one hernia fixed when then they end up finding a second one. So two hernias, uh, I think the strength training might be might be fully retired for me, but you never know. You never know. Well, even I, I think that's a great place to start. And I was excited to talk about this because I've actually had an inguinal hernia surgery about four years ago now. And did you have laparoscopic or like just mm -hmm. typical under the, you had laparoscopic? Yeah. So, okay. I was going to say you're a beast then because I had the other and it took me a while. Like to even get up and walk was a bit of a challenge there. Yeah. I've had some buddies that got, had the surgery or uh, one buddy and he was telling me, he was like, yeah, my, I think my girlfriend had to help me like get up and go, you know, go to the bathroom and like kind of like any bending over would be terrible because it's like right now, right in your core. But luckily I got um, definitely rough. It's not enjoyable, but it's getting definitely better today than it's ever been. Yeah, it's it's a funky one. And even for me, I know I thought the same thing. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'll be able to lift heavy. And like, I really worked hard before my surgery to like get in the best shape I could. And then I'm like, I'm not gonna let it hold me back. So I ended up pulling like 600 again, maybe like a year after six months after. But it was funny, too, because for me, I was like, Oh, this is my first surgery is a big thing. So I was wondering, even for you, like, were you scared to have it done? Was it kind of like, was this like a big thing you're kind of nervous to do? Or do you just kind of face it head on there? Uh, I mean, it's one of those things that kind of just, it sucks that it happens, but you, I just, I feel like I'm kind of like, uh, you know, uh, it is what it is. Like, of course this happened to me and my, you know, I power lift for a decade and hit all these PRs. And then I literally say, I'm going to retire, you know, the power lifting like a year ago. And I stop all really, I stopped the squat bench deadlift. Uh, I haven't done it in probably seven months, eight months. And then, of course, I get a hernia at the end. So I don't know if it was built up and it developed from all the heavy lifting or my body is saying, here's what you because you stopped heavy lifting. Maybe the heavy lifting was actually preventing my hernia. I, I don't know. Yeah, Either that was my way, next question. I for think you, like I was already kind of on the way out with with powerlifting. I can we you know we can dive all into that. But uh, I was already prepared to kind of retire the super heavy lifting um, with everything I have going on. And now I. Now I think I've definitely retired <laughs> the heavy lifting. So if I needed a, a an, an absolute reason, it would be it would be this the icing on the cake. Yeah, my question, my next question was going to be: Do you think it was the lifting that caused it? Because some people will argue, hey, the heavy lifting can contribute to that rip. Like it's kind of a complicated one there, right? And it's funny your point of like maybe stopping lifting did it or something. Who knows? Or you thought you're on your way out and clear. I think like... <laughs> I, I I think it's kind of one of those things that uh. You know, the three things that it said it could be would be, you know, the heavy lifting, uh, a tough time going to the bathroom and heavy coughing was the three like on Google of this is what causes this hernia, right? Of the the tear in the abdominal wall. And it really, in my head, I'm like, unless it was a very microscopic hernia that I happened at the, the peak of my deadlifting and just never started swelling, then, you know, obviously that probably that's like the first thing I would lean towards. Um, but it's also coincidental timing that I had the flu like a couple weeks, like two weeks before I found out I had this hernia. And when I had that flu, I had like a really, really intense coughing, like from being sick for like a week. So it was just like excessive, like heavy coughing, um, kind of like painful coughing. So that also could have been it. So I like to think it's just my shitty luck. I think it just comes down to, uh, you know. It's, 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 uh, I think the, 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 the world going max chill out for a little bit, you know, just, just chill out for a little bit. But yeah, I, I, I've hit everything that I've wanted to achieve in powerlifting. I mean, there were some like minor goals that I wanted to want, wanted to like in a perfect world, uh, you know, pull on like the deadlift, but as far as like squat and bench for sure, checked off deadlift, checked off 
I think at a certain point, it's uh, the risk to reward. I, I think the the give is a lot more than the take. I think they're like, um, I'm not benefiting as much of lifting the heavy weight. I think it's doing more damage to me. Yeah. And even I know right now too, you're really motivated with the business side of things and really leaning into that. And that's why we're kind of excited to even bring it back towards the fitness a little bit and to hear how that's changed in your journey and how things have kind of pushed forward and even a background for everyone listening for us. Like when we started YouTube, Max was one of the OGs. He was kind of leading the pack, documenting his journey, really showcasing incredible, incredible deadlifts, which motivated all of us to get stronger and even us to explore powerlifting more, which was absolutely awesome. And he was actually like the OG Chipotle king. He was at Chipotle every day. He would show it. And now we've come to really like Chipotle too. In the winter, we live in Florida and we have more access than we do here. There isn't too many around us. So we ended up going like 60 days in a row pretty much, which was pretty jokes. But it was really cool seeing Max just be consistent with that, being kind of at the front of the fitness industry, seeing how it's changed. And it's even cool seeing you through your journey and the different roads it takes. And I know Kyle has some really great questions around there. Yeah. So like one of my biggest things is just wondering how the heck do you manage everything? Like we're the fit, healthy, happy podcast. We try to encourage all our people to stay fit, to stay active, to stay healthy, to stay happy. But I mean, obviously family life, multiple businesses, um, just so many fires to put out. Like, do you have any things that you just find really help you stay consistent with just a crazy life in general? You know, I, uh, I, I feel like I have this thing in my head where like, I, I, I like as much, as much as I hate being stressed out, I almost like this chaotic, like fire going on at all times. Cause it just really pushes me or else I get kind of bored. I, um, I don't know. I've, I've always just kind of added more to my plate to fill up my time. And I like to push myself. Um, but I guess I've never been someone that like early on, I was like, I am, you know, I am someone that can handle a ton of businesses and a ton of stress and, and all these things. I think it just naturally, I, I just gravitate towards doing things that I like doing. And sometimes it happens to be multiple things that I really, really like doing that. I'm just like, okay, I want to do all of these things because I love to do all of them. Right. Um, I'm not as motivated by, I think money and success is a cool byproduct of like just doing things you like doing, but you know, I, money has been, never been the, the main driver for me. It's kind of like why I, I never came out with, you know, there was never a deadlift bra program. There was never a, a deadlift. Pro I could have sold so many deadlift programs, but it just did, didn't interest me. I never got into like fitness apps. I never did these things because I was like, no, I'm so busy already with things that I love. And I don't love that thing, even if it would make me money. So, you know, I love clothing, I love candy and I love fitness and YouTube. So I was just like, okay, I can do all these things. And you know, very recently I've um, kind of put the clothing on the back burner and kind of like retired that as much as I've retired the powerlifting because I fell out of love of the passion of, um, you know, clothing manufacturing and fell in love with candy manufacturing. And, you know, when the writing's on the wall, when I'm being pulled in too many different directions, I, I'm like, hey, I need to, I loved this thing and now I don't love it anymore. And I think it's okay to to change and it's okay to kind of, you know, do stuff when y'all mentioned like, you know, me being like the powerlift guy and, you know, even being the Chipotle guy for the longest time, I would always, whenever something would be like my, my shtick or I'd get known for doing something I'm like, oh, well, I have to keep doing this so I can be that guy, right? I got to be that guy that does this thing and I can't ever deviate from it. And it's always like super natural. But then at some point when I don't want to do it anymore, I'm like, oh, crap, do I still need to keep doing this thing? You know, even though I don't want to do it anymore because people know me for it. Um, and I think having that kind of internal battle. So uh, I've gotten better as I've gotten older, but I had the same time as everyone else in the day. Um, I think what's unique about maybe my story a lot is that um, I, I have a very small team and a very small kind of circle. I think I do a lot more in the businesses and everything that I do than people maybe think that I do. Like, um, you know, I don't have a a videographer. I don't have anyone editing my videos. I don't have anyone producing my podcast. I don't have anyone editing my podcast. Um, you know, I, I do all of those things by myself. I, um, it, and then when it comes to the businesses, you know, I don't have any business partners with Cyrus Chefs. I have a great team of employees that are very crucial to what we do, but, um, you know, making mistakes and spend money when I'm not supposed to, and, um, getting to where we've gotten today has just been 
by, you know, figuring it out, um, not really having like a blueprint of like what you're supposed to do and in the CPG world. But um, yeah, I, just, I, I like staying busy, but I'm also even very, do, I get distracted very easily as well. You even do all your accounting too, right? I, uh, I think I found well, out. Well, I finally, I, I, you know, what's funny is people call, probably call me dumb, but I have been using the same accountant. Um, they're based out of, uh, they're on the East coast and it's a small accounting firm. And I started using them because a buddy of mine was an accountant at this firm and then he left and then, um, he was like, Oh, I'm just going to pass you along to my manager. And I was like, okay, cool. This, like, this was back in 2000 and, oh shoot, 15 or something, 2004, 15, maybe. Um, and I've just been using the same accountant ever since. And a lot of people are like, I have a lot of friends who use these crazy big accounting firms because their businesses are so big and, and mine's just as big as theirs, but they're like, Max, why do you use this? Like almost this tiny little accounting firm. I'm like, because they've been with me since day one. So they've like experienced all of the growth and everything that I've done. So I think they're the best candidate for managing my, you know, tax stuff because they've seen me go from, you know, making 300 bucks a month to what I'm doing now. And like, so they've, they've grown with me. And, um, so it's, a uh, it's actually, it's actually kind of, kind of wild. So I finally outsourced yeah, the accounting and the bookkeeping. I used to always, I used to even like document all my receipts at the end of the month. I'd be like, okay, like what did I spend? And now it's like, oh, a bookkeeper, that's really helpful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we were even reflecting too, like we saw on the podcast you did with Russ about the beauty of like slow, solid, consistent growth as well, as opposed to the explosive growth you see with like new quote unquote fitness influencers and what can come around that and i've noticed too like i feel like one of your strengths has always been you've had a strong network that you've leaned into people you trust we had the amazing opportunity to hang out with your brother for a few days which was really cool and yeah. to your point of that account it too like having them scale with you and having someone you can trust is so amazing and we were even saying too like as cool as it would have been to like blow up from like a thousand to like multiple million like it is almost a little bit scary how quick some people are seeing that success or seeing money come in and I feel like that gradual growth is like one of the best parts of a process because it allows you to adapt with it and to really like not kind of get over consumed by it. And I guess even like a fun question adding on top of that is like, as you've seen the fitness industry change, like obviously being a bit more of a pioneer in the YouTube side of things when there was less people, like what, what do you like about where it's going and what do you dislike about where it's going? It's hard for me to answer these questions without sounding like an old head of, you know, <laughs> my generation was the best generation. I think everyone thinks that the, you know, the era they were in was the, was the golden era. 2013 to 2017 was a golden era though. I've, I, even I've seen a lot of memes. People, I really, people agree. <laughs> I really do think so as well. Um, I, I think the fitness community was just that. I think it was more of an actual community, um, especially in the YouTube space. And it's not because there wasn't as many people. Um, it was just like, it felt like a community when you'd go watch, you know, my video, you would see like, my hair's all crazy. You would see, <laughs> you know, Omar Esau and, and, you know, Brandon Campbell and Matty Fusaro and Christian Guzman and Nick Wright and Matt Ogus. You'd see everyone commenting on every single one of person's every each videos. And like, you would see this community and people were like collabing and people are doing all these things. Cause everyone was just like doing this thing. Cause they love to do it. And, I think eventually everything, you know, if, if it doesn't make any money, it's just a hobby. And I think the fact that a hobby turned into something that can make money is really cool. Um, but now I think that social media isn't a hobby anymore. I think now everyone, when we started, there was no, there was very few or like pretty much no one actually making a living from it. So that it wasn't even this like blueprint of like, if I keep doing X, then Y can happen to me. Right. Um, and I can quit this life that I hate and be an influencer. It was just, oh, I just like making videos. I'm going to keep making videos. Whereas now I would say nine times out of 10, not saying everyone, but most people are starting social media now to as fast as possible to get to the point where they're making the money and they have the fame and they're getting the free stuff. And I think it's just a different path that people are taking and there's different reasonings behind it. Um, and yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just interesting, I guess, you know, when I see the, the, uh, the up and coming kind of fitness generation and you can, and it's, and it's wild seeing it happen because 
when I'm, you know, I'm friends with like Steve Cook and Paige Hathaway and, and these people who were here kind of, they're not dead, but like, you know, they were here before us, they were the generation before, and they probably saw this YouTube era come up and be like, oh, this is dumb. Like, no, you just need to be like a, a like a model and really shredded and you go to these expos and, you know, what are these people showing their, you know, days of eating and stuff? And they probably thought we were dumb. And now it's kind of like, and like you see it happening and now I see the next generation, like it's here, right? It's, it's been here. Um, and I, I guess, I guess I get a little disappointed because it's just so different than what I remember, than I, the passion that I had. And now, you know, six months in people buying these, like either people being so like blatantly like promoting steroids or, um, you know, showing this like flashy life that they got out of nowhere. It just, it's just different. And I guess it's, uh, maybe the older generation in me that doesn't necessarily agree with it. Um, I think it's kind of a slippery slope because I think nowadays there's a, there's always gonna be a new, a new person, a new one that's cooler, you know, more jacked, more attractive, whatever. And, uh, it's this perpetual kind of hamster wheel. That's just going to kind of churn out the, the people. And I think a lot of people are just trying to get that quick buck rather than kind of make like, you know, like a big impact because I look at a lot of the people coming up and I'm like, and I feel like this maybe kind of sounds, you know, wrong, but I'm more like, what, what is, what are you finding motivation out of? Like, what is it? The fact that they're 20 years old and they started taking, you know, every steroid under the sun and they're jacked and they bought Lamborghini. Like, well, where is this, the journey? Like, where is the, the story and like the, the kind of the come up and the struggle it's, um, so it, it's, I don't know. I, uh, I, I like seeing it all, but I'm definitely glad that I was in my, my world because, uh, I feel like it was a lot more pure of the reasonings behind kind of getting started. I, I think that's yeah, awesome. I'm just jealous and... that I don't have a bunch of Lamborghinis. I, I <laughs> no. need to be buying some shit. Well, <laughs> no, I respect like just how consistent you've been. And like, that's one thing over the years. Like, I'll be honest, I have followed a lot of people on our fitness page on my personal and unfollowed a lot. Whereas someone like yourself, even just like watching your YouTube videos, being subscribed, like it's just always been you and always been like authentic. And I really like that you've just like stayed, stayed the course. And I, I think that's really like, that's the best way to live from my personal viewpoint and even on the topic of slow growth, like it, it is so easy just to go down a route that you don't even believe in and just rent all these things and do all these things that are just trying to get you fame. But I guess like one of my big questions is I'm actually sitting here drinking one of these ghosts I brought from Florida. It's a lot harder to get things here in, in Canada. It's a fun yeah. fact. I didn't even realize sour strips was here because just naturally like everything comes to us like so late. Um, so I brought a bunch back. We do have them, but it's just not as easy to get like yeah. gas stations are everywhere here. Am uh, Amazon, Amazon sour strips in like, th like a three weeks. So done. I like it. But, um, I, j I'm curious because I mean, I love what ghost has been doing. I'm not like, we're not actually sponsored by anything, but I was just thinking like, you've been there from the start and I I'm pretty like, I'm curious to hear the story of like how you became sponsored. Obviously you have movement, you have a couple other things. Uh, some things have come and gone, but like ghost is you've been there from the start. Like, how did you become a part of that? And, uh, just, yeah, anything about that? I'd, I'd, I'd be curious to learn more. Yeah. Uh, so ghost is what's interesting about ghost is, uh, one of the owners, Dan, he, he started the business. He started his, he started ghost on his birthday, uh, similar to how I started sour shows on my birthday. So it's, it's, it's easy to kind of remember, um, you know, that how long it's been, um, when you kind of like categorize it by birthdays. And, um, so ghost is seven years old. I think they just celebrated their seven year birthday and which is wild to think that I've been with them for that long, but I remember basically when I, when I came up, you know, the, the sponsorship world wasn't like it is now. Again, there wasn't people just chucking money at you and trying to get these, you know, big names on, on social media. Um, I was with, I was with, uh, Mark Lobliner and with MTS way, which, um, which I, I always hold a dear place in my heart. It was a kind of a short duration, but I got connected through someone else and I kind of got it, it was never like a sponsorship. And and the reason I'm talking about this is because I think it's important of why I kind of went to ghost was with, with, um, Mark Lobliner and MTS nutrition, which fantastic products. I think their, their protein was like 
just a, such a great tasting product. Mark was a great guy. Um, and I would be basically would have, I'd have like a code and, and I remember the code was like, someone could save 5% off their order on their first order. And then I would make 10% commission and something that I've actually never told anyone. And I, and I could pull up the emails to back this up of just how cool of a guy I, I am. I remember emailing Mark and being like, look, I would rather take less commission and offer a bigger discount to people because I think 5% for the first time is just like not that big of a savings. And I'd rather take less money so I can give a bigger discount to people. Like I would rather do that. And he was like, no, like the margins don't really work. And I'm like, yeah, but just pay me less so we can like split the difference, right? And um, it, it, it always felt like this kind of just here's a guy with a code, here's a guy with a code. Right. And I, I didn't feel like I was really like a part of the company. I felt like I was just someone with a code and that's not the downplay MTS. It was more of like, that just wasn't a thing. Right. And so I wanted to really like be with like a, a I wanted to feel like a part of a company rather than just kind of like, you know, a person with a code. And, um, I remember, so I started, you know, being friends with like Christian Guzman and a bunch of people around 2014 and, he was mentioning how him and some other influencers were going to be a part of this new company called Ghost, who Dan and Ryan were, were, were starting, and they came from working with Cellucor, and they started their own thing, and they wanted to kind of, you know, do things a little bit different, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is, like, this is the one, this is, this is sick, like, I could be on a ground floor, but they already had all their athletes, they already had their, I think there was like five, there was, you know, the Stafford brothers, Brooke Evers, Christian Guzman, uh, the online coach and Nikki Blackadder. I want to say those were like the five or six kind of people because they're starting out small budget and um, kind of last minute, they were shooting some content out in California or like Utah or something. And I guess they were just all chatting about like, uh, like, man, like, I wonder, like, is there anyone else we should add to this team? And I think both Christian and Nikki both were like, Hey, you should really look into this max guy. And, um, you know, he's one of our friends. I think it was, you know, he's just, he's kind of with, you know, a supplement company, but it's nothing really super serious. And, um, I actually, they actually respond, ghost responded to one of my Snapchats. I, they like Snapchatted me or something and said like, Hey legend, like love what you're doing. Like would love to chat about, you know, potentially getting you on the team. And I was, I remember when that happened, I was like, Oh my gosh, this is everything I've been like wanting for what we, you know, everything I've been wanting. Um, and so I had that conversation with him and it was just, I was like, I was literally like the last minute add on, um, I think like two weeks before they launched the brand. I think like the next week I flew down to Texas to shoot the, you know, the ghost is coming kind of video where I'm so pale and fat in that video. My hair is all like slicked back and stuff, but, um, yeah, it was super fast happening, but it was like, it was kind of just, I think it goes to show you that if you have a good network and you be a good person and you have like positive things that people say about you, you know, it can go a long way. So me just being a cool guy and then, you know, being friends with uh, some people on the team, you know, it was a, a last minute addition. And then flash forward, you know, we've done some amazing things together as a, as a company with, you know, coming out with a bunch of, a bunch of, of products and doing, you know, cool collabs with across brands and, um, I think it was a net positive for everyone involved, you know, so, uh, I've loved being with them and, and, um, I think ghost is just, it's such a family feel. And I've mentioned this a, a, a couple of times that, you know, if tomorrow I actually just resigned for like two years, so we're, it's not going to happen, but, um, it's like, if tomorrow ghost was like, Hey Max, you're, you know, you, your views are kind of dipping. You got the hernia. <laughs> you're not deadlifting anymore. We we're, you're off the team. You're no longer a fitness influencer. Um, I wouldn't actually go to any other supplement companies where, you know, a lot of people, they kind of leave one and then they're like, mm, the next week they're like, this is the best protein I've ever had, you know? And, um, it just wouldn't be like that. I'm at a different point in my life, I think, but, um, it's been a, it's been a crazy journey with ghost and they've grown so much of the company. And, um, yeah, it's actually, it's actually wild how long I've been with them. Seven years. Damn. It is crazy because I remember when Ghost first came out, it was like this cool, crazy new thing. The branding's so good, obviously, and I'm sure you even learned from that because your branding is phenomenal as well. Like your Thank packs you. of sour strips are just so fun. Um, when we went down to Florida, my wife actually 
used to watch her blogs and everything and she's like oh gotta try these sour strips and we tried them and we like liked them so much we went to target the next night and got a few of them to share as well which was awesome so it's definitely cool seeing what you pulled from that and it is crazy too that seeing how big and how these companies have shot up and it's funny even mark lobliner is a a name i haven't heard in a while like there's so much nostalgia and like a lot of these ogs and to your point of just the people coming out and even omar like the early journey of like I may not be a Steve Cook or Paige Hathaway, but here's me, my journey, my life, how I make it work. Like, that's what I love the most about it too. And I think that was like some of the most fun. And I'm even curious too, do you, I'm I'm sure the answer is yes, but do you find your fitness journey has helped you a lot in your business journey? Like, do you find you've applied a lot of the principles and how do you find managing, obviously being so into business nowadays i mean you're filming a podcast with us a few days after a surgery like i think that speaks to your work ethic like do you find you've pulled a lot from the fitness side towards that and has it been harder to maintain the level of fitness you want with being more focused into business yeah i've always promoted fitness as i mean really to anyone but i you know as a man i speak to other other men maybe in a in the space and i say that you know as I think everyone on this planet, assuming you're physically able to do some level of fitness, everyone should do some level of fitness, right? And obviously, I've gravitated towards the powerlifting and the the strength training, resistance training. But I think not only the – I think fitness has so many carryovers to – obviously, you're going to look better. You're going to feel better. You're going to live longer, right? But just the um, the mental things that it, it, it triggers of your um, your confidence, your – ability to, uh, have, um, you know, discipline and restrictions. And because, you know, if you want to achieve a a lean physique or a big physique or a a strength, you know, related goals, or you're losing weight, you can't just bullshit around. You have to have a very, you know, I have to understand what I'm eating. I have to be restrictive on my diet. I have to be disciplined in training. I can't, you know, miss these sessions because I'm not going to reach my goal. And I think over time, doing all these things just molds you into a better man, into a better person, into a better human, right? Because you're you're min-maxing your character. And I think fitness, not only the physical attributes of like doing it, but just the um, the carryover that it has like in your life. And I think that applies a lot into business of having that same kind of discipline of having resisting temptation. It's easy to go for the, the, you know, the, the quick money, but you know, the, the long game is a better one. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to maybe go down the route of, you know, steroids, but the negatives can kind of outweigh it. And I, you know, I've always promoted, you know, non, I've promoted natural lifting because of really, I'm just scared of, you know, my body rejecting the steroids and, you know, it, uh, doing something negative to me, but, um, um, I think that the long play is like what the focus should be that, you know, fitness is a marathon, not a sprint. And you should almost treat your business like that as well with little caveats here and there. And then to, to, to touch on like the fitness level, um, I'd be lying if I would, if I'd said that my interest in fitness and even my physique is the same or even close to like what it was back in the day. But before I started all these businesses, like my only focus was lifting weights. You know, I didn't, I was out of college, you know, didn't have very many responsibilities, wasn't in a relationship, just wanted to hang out and, you know, drink with my friends and go to work and make some money so I can, you know, go to the bars on the weekends, maybe, you know, flirt with some girls and, you know, look better with my shirt off. And that was like my only responsibilities. Right. So of course I was hardcore, you know, never missing a session. Every session was very, um, like intense. It was focused. I was like looking forward to every session. I was like, Oh, I can't wait. And, you know, two weeks I get to hit, you know, five fifty on my Jim Windler five, three, one program on my powerlifting. And I was like, you know, just obsessed with it. And then, you know, and I could just, when I was lifting, that's why if you ever go back and watch all my deadlift videos, you would see me always do this, like, kind of like I'd stare at the bar. I'd always be like, 10 feet away from the platform and I'd kind of like be jumping around. I'd look like I'm going to start crying and like, I'm just like amped up because I'm getting in this like mental state that like, I can't even begin to explain where like I can feel it when it's like happening and it just helps me like rip the weight off the ground. And if I'm not in this mental state, it's very hard for me to do deadlifts at at a heavy weight. So having that intensity had a big carryover. And then when I started getting like busier and busier nowadays, it's, it's impossible. And, you know, and then I started filming so much more of my videos. So then my content started being like, 
okay, Max, like sacrifice a little bit of the intensity because, hey, you need to set the tripod up and have seven different angles of you doing this exercise. So, you know, you have to stop doing the exercise, focus on the shot. Did you get it in frame? What is the next clip? So I'd be thinking about filming working out more than the actual working out. Um, so it just evolved over time. And then I think my like peak physique of the leanest to most muscle ratio, you know, it's, it's funny saying that as someone who's like, you know, 165 pounds, but, uh, <laughs> was probably like 2018, um, 2018 when I went, when I went over to like, uh, visit like Ibiza with like Rob Lipset in the UK and like Australia and stuff. That was probably like just the best I've ever looked. Um, and I can definitely like look back and be like, damn, like I was jacked and I don't look like that now, but nowadays, um, I used to put the gym over everything. And now I put, now I fit, I used to fit my life around fitness and now I fit fitness around my life. And I think it takes a certain level of just life experience for you to get to that point. And like, it's hard to explain to people until they kind of go through it when they're like, oh, the gym isn't the most important thing in the entire world. Um, it ain't that serious. And it, you know, if, and if you're not making all your money from the way you look and whatever, then, you know, sacrificing relationships or friendships or going out to have a longer session in the gym, it's like the long game isn't there. Um, and then when business started happening now, it's impossible for me to just turn off my brain when I'm working out. I, I can't, um, I have so much like stress and thoughts on my plate, um, that, I can't just throw my music in, put my phone on airplane mode and just be laser focused in the gym. I'm like, okay, uh, we have that shipment coming in tomorrow. Oh my God, you know, we have to spend extra money on this. And I, I just, it's like impossible for me to switch it off. So my relationship with fitness now is to try to just maintain that level of, um, maintain my physique as good I can while balancing it with my life. But, um, the intensity is definitely not there as much. And, you know, I've been working out for over a decade doing the same exercises. So, you know, I feel like at some point it's going to kind of go down and, you know, I'm not stepping on stages once a year that boosts my confidence or my motivation in the gym. So I love working out. I love fitness. I love strength training. Um, but it's definitely not my everything anymore. Yeah. And I think that's awesome. Like even I noticed the theme here of like longevity and to your point now, like fitness is being marketed more as take a bunch of sauce. You'll look really good. You'll look amazing. You'll get a Lambo and you'll have six girlfriends type of thing. Like it's yeah. kind of crazy. And before it was like, here are the small incremental changes I'm making to see more progress. And I think even having that long-term view, even for us, we started as Colossus Fitness. We were young in university. We wanted to be massive. I want to get as big as I could, as strong as I could. And now this podcast, we pushed over to it being fit, healthy, happy. And that was really targeted because like you said, I think life has so many different components and journeys and where people will go wrong, even for us with our coaching is they'll want to do everything immediately. And I think that's just how culture is now. It's like, I want something, I'll get it now. But that component of like letting fitness have a priority in your life, like you said, when that was number one, you had an event, but still finding a way to get it done, to still make it a priority to a degree. And like you said, to have that adapt with as your life and priorities have changed and for that to be okay. And then having that consistent, slow gain progress and mindset I think is so important that's something we really focus on as well because some people come in so quick and then they come out so quick and there's a price that comes alongside that so I think that was really yeah well and like and you know I, I mentioned how I'm kind of like shelving powerlifting at the moment and and the that ties into like my focus on business is because I only enjoyed powerlifting when I was hitting PRs and like you know, hitting these big numbers in the gym and for my body weight, you know, I hit a 501 pound squat, uh, 650 pound deadlift, uh, 300 and like 35 pound bench. Well, I know that one's not impressive, but for my body weight of a hundred and under 170 pounds hitting a 500 squat and a mid 600 deadlift is like elite level shit. Right. And for me to go beyond those numbers, takes a a very strict focus regiment of you can't miss your sessions every gym you go to better have the bars that you need you don't when you travel you better take your belt and your shoes and and like i was 
able to like not worry about anything else. And for me to hit those num to get above those numbers at this stage in my life with everything I have going on, I think it's just impossible. I think it's uh, you know, it's it's not of interest to me anymore because I would have to hey, sorry, can't do that this weekend. I got to train. Hey, you know, I, hey, my friends want to work out with me. Sorry, no, guys, I have to go do my powerlifting in the corner over there. Like, I don't want to do that anymore. Like, I don't want, you know, when I was peak powerlifting, I was like, all my buddies powerlifted. And I would, you know, now I'm like by myself, right? I, um, And with everything going on, like the amount of dedication I'd have to commit to the gym that I'm not willing to commit uh, to go above those numbers is astronomical. And I'm not having fun, you know, deadlifting, you know, 500 for sets of seven or eight. Like it just, that doesn't interest me. I'm like, no, I want to hit doubles and triples of massive weight all the time. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I, I, it's a, I think it was a cool point in my life. And uh, now, now we're on to just keeping this Adonis body. <laughs> I love around, that. You know, I respect it so much because I feel like, I mean, we've coached close to 4,000 people now and just, busy business owners, just busy lives, lawyers, just so many different things. And I think where some people struggle, we obviously try to find ways to help them out and keep them motivated is they um, often would, before coming into the program, they'll just not really have that like longer term approach and not realizing that we can scale things down and we can switch things up. And also a, a really fun way to keep going. Obviously you've been in fitness, what, 15 plus years now lifting. We've been close to the same and it's just about trying different things. Like we've done multiple powerlifting meets similar to you, uh, done a physique show, uh, just done so many different things. And it's really cool to just like try different things along the journey, see what sticks, but also like on those busy weeks and those busy months and shipments going crazy for you, like to still maintain a certain level and be able to scale back a bit, but not just throw it all out. Yeah. And I, I think it's, it's all about just like, it comes back to what I said earlier about doing like, I only do things that I love doing. And, um, like now it's like, I like lifting with my friends and doing, you know, bodybuilding movements. I like doing that. Right. And it's like, could I offset a lot of my workload, um, to put more focus on the gym? Absolutely. Right. So it, when I said it's impossible, it's not impossible. It's just like, I, but I would rather, I am more interested in me physically working on my businesses than me hitting deadlift PRs. And so because I am more interested in working on the business than getting even stronger, then that's why I'm not going to sacrifice business so I can, for my strength or like, you know, delegate out. Like I could do those things, but I don't want to. Um, and I think it's, it's like having peace and like understanding with yourself. And I thought when I was even forever ago, I was like, if I don't hit PRs, no one's going to keep watching me. I have to keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And I have to be the deadlift bra. I have to be the deadlift guy. I have to deadlift. Like Max is the deadlift guy. He's, he is deadlift. And if I stop doing that, am I going to be letting people down? And I think once you start being like, what, what actually makes you happy? Like what actually, what do I want to do? What does Max enjoy doing with his time? And if I've fallen out of love with powerlifting, I don't need to keep powerlifting you know, to prove it to everyone that I'm the hardcore power lifter. I think if anything, it shows more of my authentic self of like, I do things that I love to do. And like, when I, when I do them, I'm going to do them to my full potential because like I, my passion is in these and I'm not having my little hands and everything. I have, you know, a couple main things that I focus on and I do well at the things that I fully focus on. So, um, I think it shows growth and I think it shows maturity and as, mm -hmm weird as that is to correlate that to, you know, maybe my giving up of like powerlifting. I think it's just like, you know, I don't, I'm not a fake individual. I do exactly what I want to yeah. do. And if I don't want to do it, I don't want to do, yeah. do it. And that like, that just shows the, you know, being genuine and also just like not having an ego. And I think that's where a lot of people struggle is they just, if they are known as that, they need to hold on to that. If they start something like hmm. everyone says like, go keep going, never quit all this stuff. But it's like, what actually makes sense here? And I think just maturing and being able to realize you also that. like gotta be realistic with mm -hmm. like especially strength training is as much as everyone would like to say like you are not going to indefinitely get stronger like you you know i'm not just gonna the the deadlift weight is not just going to keep going up i'm not going to be you know i'm not going to be squatting 700 pounds at you know my body weight like it's just not in the books mm -hmm. for me me benching 405 is like you have to be realistic so I think when I've hit a lot of these monumental goals that I wanted to hit, it's kind of like, okay, 
You know, I can be the guy that's like back in my day, I, I deadlifted 650 pounds, you know, like I don't, mm -hmm. I don't need to prove anything to anyone. I, I hit, you know, internal goals and now it's on to the next thing. And like, so, let me, let, let, let me pull the 650 pound deadlift of business, you know, like yeah. that's, that's on what the, I'm going to do. On the topic of like switching things up a bit, because obviously sour strips, 25 million plus bags, like congratulations on that. And uh, thank you. Uh, I know, and it's only going to grow. So when you first started, obviously clothing ever forward, um, obviously, you know, you decided to switch things up and prioritize, Hey, sour strips is it. That's where we're dialing in right now. But I remember back when you started the brand and I'm curious for you to share with our viewers, like when you created that name, cause Colossus fitness is big, jacked, strong, but ever forward, like what, where did that come from? And what does that mean to you? Yeah. So, uh, ever forward is a phrase that, uh, my been in kind of in my family, my, my dad got it from the military and kind of, you know, it kind of is what it is, right. Has that, you know, ever forward, always progressing, always striving for, you know, forward progression in life kind of, you know, ever forward, it literally is what it means. And, um, it didn't really mean a lot. It, it didn't really like, I knew that my dad would always say it. And my, my family, even before I started the brand had like tattoos of it, um, on their body and stuff. So it was more of like a, I wanted to start a business because everyone was kind of doing like clothing. So I was like, okay, how can I start this business? But I want to separate myself from it. Um, and then, and I was like, instead of coming up with a arbitrary like name and like, Hey guys, this is what this name means. This is what this made up phrase or word or combination of words means. And here's why I came up with it kind of thing. It was more like, Hey, here's a phrase that does mean something to me. Here's exact, I'm telling you exactly what it means to my family and, you know, my dad and, you know, here's why it's called that. And, um, you know, if you can, if it can translate and correlate into your life and, um, then that's, then that's great. But, um, so it was more of like a, it was a clothing brand that had a reasoning behind the, the name of it. And then it started as this motivational clothing brand. And then quickly I got into things of like, oh, I want to make other things that I like wearing, like button downs and chino pants. But how do you make a motivational pair of chino pants, right? So it it eventually got to the point where like, okay, it doesn't need to be a motivational clothing brand. It can just be a clothing brand that if you want to know the reasoning of why it's called that, there is a backstory to it that has a very personal, uh, you know, meaning, uh, from my dad. So, uh, yeah, that's the, that's so, the origin story. I, I love that. And I guess I heard you say something the other day and I had to pause, like, you know, when you hear something and you're just like, wait, what? Like that was, that was great. And you essentially, what you said was sometimes you have to go ever backwards to go ever forwards. That's right. Uh, like what, what does that mean to you? And could you explain a little bit? Um, I know what you mean, but I'm curious to yeah, hear your take. I mean, it, it's similar to kind of like, you know, the whole, like, it's a quirky way of saying the two steps back to, you know, three steps forward or one step back, two steps forward kind of thing. It's just like, I think a lot of times people think that everything is just going to be going like up and up and up and up and up and they're loving the, the forward momentum, the growth. But as soon as they have like one setback, they think the whole world is kind of crashing down on them or thinks it's all over or if, or if it's, you know, lasting a little longer in the setback or maybe there's two setbacks. Right. And um, it's always taking a look at the bigger picture and understanding that like sometimes there's going to be it's I think life is all about learning from your mistakes. And the, the key is to just not make those mistakes repeatedly. Right. So if you have these errors, if you have these emotional motivational or you know emotional setbacks or you know monetary setbacks or business setbacks it's like okay what there's always a reason to like why things happened and it's important to like look at why did this actually happen it's like oh i don't know it's like no 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 what did you do what did the business do what did this person do like something caused this and then it's being like okay how do i make sure that this doesn't happen like this again and then that's how you you know go ever forward. Right. And, um, so I, I, I think it's just a, it's just a mindset thing. Um, and it's, it takes a lot of internal battle to kind of like be, accept, I guess, because it's very easy to be super stoked when everything's going great. But the second that anything, you know, bad happens, you're just like, Oh my gosh, this isn't happening to anyone else. No one else is dealing with this kind of stuff. You know, I'm the only, why is this happening to me? Poor me. There's a black cloud over me. And, um, you know, everyone deals with, everyone deals with stuff on their own levels. And, you know, I, everything I talk about now is more like in 
business term. So it's like a, a, anyone's business you look at, you know, you're looking at it through this like lens of what they want you to perceive. And um, every business is going through some bullshit, some struggles, some loss of money, some errors, some setbacks, some legality issues, you know, they, they just aren't showcasing it. And so it's understanding like every, you know, no one's perfect. No business is perfect. And it's, you know, just about learning, adapting, evolving and continuing on. I love that, man. I uh, probably have about 20 other questions down, but I don't want to, you know, keep you here. I know time is valuable. And honestly, I know a lot of people are like this. So I say, Hey, let's, let's do a part two. If we get enough uh, positive feedback. Um, I'm not sure if Josh had any other questions, but on my note, I wanted to see if there was just, we're big on quotes. We always say them. That's just kind of who we are. And that's what we do. Every podcast is if there's anything that stands out to you just for, you know, the audience, just anything that just, you really kind of resonate with. Um, I'm putting you on the spot here, just like every other question we are. Uh, I'd love to hear that. (laughs) You know, I feel like I used to be way more of a motivational quote kind of guy. And I used to always just, you know, lean to the the ever forward as the, as the mantra hey, that works. Um, now I always gravitate towards just goofy shit. And like in my head, I just like, it's like the most powerful quote. I think that, that like, that like aligns with just like life is just like, it is what it is. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's like, sometimes like you need to accept things for what they are and at their face value. And it's about being like, okay, this is happening to me. It is what it is. What am I going to do about it? Am I going to sulk? Am I going to cry? Am I going to complain? Am I going to be happy? Am I going to be sad? It's like how you react to things um, has a great impact on like, you know, what the future of that outcome is going to be. So I really wish I had some, I I need to, I need to read more like motivational books and have some lines. It's kind of like the quote, life is 10% what happens to you, 90% how we react to it. Right there. That's your that's your yeah. quote. Pretty much what you just said in a max tuning. Way. Add max tuning on the end of that. You <laughs> miss every man. shot that you don't take, Michael Scott, when you're at <laughs> That's my favorite one. I'm a big office fan too. That's that's the best. And yeah, I think that's such a great way of putting it. And even I love that mindset of just ever forward. And I think that goes into what you were mentioning there of just how you react to life and it is what it is like as simple and funny as it is like people always say it is what it is but it's very true and I think even with the hernia at first I felt that way and I was making such good progress I was feeling so good and I'm like this is it it's brutal we've all had those moments where like this is going to be such a big setback I don't know how it's going to affect my life my business is going to have this big hiccup but to your point too we've really been focusing ourselves on being like how can I not be a victim to circumstance and how can I do what I can do to get through it no matter what life throws at you and adapting and adjusting and moving forward and being ever forward. I think those two really connect quite nicely. And I think that's a great theme. And to your point, Kyle, of like if I had any questions, I was going to say the quote one too, because we definitely do love it. And I think when you have those thoughts in your mind and even it is what it is, it's almost freeing. Like if you were to leave and get hit, I mean, heaven forbid, knock on wood or something like by another jive or something, it is what it is. Like you can sit and cry about it or you can get on with it, find a solution. I think that was incredibly well said and it was absolutely awesome having you on here. I think you dropped some great knowledge bombs, which was killer. And it's really fun to take in a walk back through the memory lane that is like the fitness and how things have changed in the industry rather. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, coming on the pod and sharing it. I feel like I ramble a lot and I say, a, I, I talk for a while and not sure if I said it, say anything, you know, but I feel the same way sometimes, but people keep listening. So I think, I think that's a good sign. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to say, I guess we'll put your Instagram down below. So yeah. Anything else you want to shout out before we head off? Just come check me out on YouTube. You luckily with a weird name, like Max with two X's and this tuning that everyone misspells in the last name, it's very easy to find me. So come check me out. You might love me. You might hate me, but either way, I'm going to be in your life in some way, you know, whether it's, whether it's on, on the podcast, you didn't think I'd be popping on or the candy at your local store. You can't escape this guy and this dog. That's (laughs) awesome. All right, dude. Thanks so much for being here today. Absolutely guys. Talk soon. All right. Peace and love always. Bye.